everyone, welcome back to the Cell Cast Presents Untangling Kingdom Hearts Chapter 3. Uh, entering in, We are now entering into Wonderland. The cutscenes we'll be looking at today are A Curious World, The Perfect Size, and Alice. Before I get into that, though, I need to talk about what you probably remember from last time, where I discovered that, yeah, the cut, while the cutscenes are in the game, they are not covering everything. So I have been going back and watching Playframes uh, Let's Play of the series, which I am including in the a link to in the show notes. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the gameplay I am seeing so far. Uh, this is definitely a uh, gotcha mechanic cell phone game. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, gotcha is a Japanese word referring that translates directly to toy vending machine. Basically, if you've ever been in a uh, in a place where they've had the little toy vending machines, like Walmart, I suppose I've seen them there, where you put your quarter in and you turn it and you get this random capsule pop out that's basically what we're talking about here uh it's called gotcha because the japanese free-to-play games kind of created this sort of mechanic uh for especially for cell phones in console games a lot of times we refer to this as loot boxes though that they aren't technically separate but they are very 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 similar and because this uses those gotcha mechanics they have to pull um, what you're getting out of those things, you're, you know, the quote unquote toys from the capsules from somewhere. And you would think they would have just pulled from like Disney stuff, namely, you know, the worlds maybe you've already been to maybe some, maybe some tie ins, some movies that are coming out while the game was being released. I mean, it was released over the game was in service for nearly 10 years. So, I mean, how many Disney movies came out during that time. And in a lot of cases, they actually did do that, but they also decided to pull from other Kingdom Hearts games. The problem is this is the earliest Kingdom Hearts game chronologically. And this is supposed to be taking place like in the distant past. So, a lot of the characters that I see in this gameplay that you, they are they've gotten out of this or uh, that Dan's gotten out of this in that play frame are characters that technically shouldn't even be alive yet. Now, granted, it's not like the characters are actually showing up in game. It is literally a picture that is put on a button that when you do it, it does a special attack that the character doesn't even show up for the attack. So, it literally, it's just like the 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 static image that they use for this. In a lot of cases, being concept art for of, for crying out loud, it just kind of fills the screen. This energy effect kind of goes out from it, and that's it. It's not really affecting story, but there is a part of me that looks at that and goes, "Really, you couldn't have pulled from something that doesn't affect the game? It doesn't mess with like lore and such." I mean. This is Tetsuya Nomura we're talking about. I know he at least had something to do with this game, and he is pulling lore from this for other Kingdom Hearts games, especially when we get to Kingdom Hearts 3. That's where it starts really becoming uh, apparent. And I, I'm guessing that, for the most part, this was chosen because from when that like, Kingdom Hearts 3 actually came out. So they probably used those as kind of a promotional tie-in. I know that's kind of the... The thing, and it is gameplay, so it really should not matter because it doesn't affect the story from what I can see. But it is kind of weird, and it kind of throws you out of what little story actually is here. I say story here because I literally, this is my like I said earlier, this is my first time going through the, this particular game. I'm looking for how this is going to connect going forward. Uh, so far, we are still in the so early mechanics of this that. You know, they're still introducing like gameplay elements and the fact that you can go to these different worlds. Uh, I suspect we are still in like the initial release where they only had, you know, four worlds made up and you went back and forth to all these different worlds and this uh, to, to level up and gather all this Lux, as, it, as, the, as it's called, for still reasons unknown, I like to point out. Uh, but yeah, the other problem, if you didn't, for whatever reason, did not catch the last episode is 
while the cutscenes in the app right now, in the theater mode on the app, do are are in the game. There are little interstitiary uh, cutscenes that are not like cinematic esque cutscenes, but they're the uh, what I call the visual novel style cutscenes, where you've got the little paper image that pops up where they're standing next to each other, and there's some talking back and forth, and it's, literally it's like the cheapest way you could make a cutscene. But for whatever reason, despite the fact that it had to have been super simple to edit in and make work, they did not leave those in theater mode. So, and that seems to be where, at least here in the early stages, a lot of the disconnect is even happening. I mean, if you're at the end of Wonderland, it does, or not the end of Wonderland, but the end of uh, the Dwarf Woodland section, or, just immediately previous to this, it didn't even tell you you were leaving. So that initially threw me off and which is why I've gone back and started look, watching play frames play. Through. And I did have double checked that while well, I haven't watched the whole thing. It does look like he finished the game before it, everything became theater mode only. So at least I will be able to talk about the whole thing. And yeah, if Dan from play frame is listening to this, uh, thank you for not getting mad at me for using your footage, at least to help fill in these gaps. Uh, so, yeah, let's continue on with uh, Wonderland, which is where we're heading into today. The first cutscene in this is A Curious World. In this one, we don't really get a whole lot happening. We see our player character, which from this point forward, even though I, because I'm now that I'm watching like two different versions, uh, I am going to call him key player uh, because I got to thinking about it. There is a chance they may at one time refer, or I may have to refer back to this game later on in this Untangling Kingdom Hearts series. So I do need a canon. I do need a name to call him besides Drew because I'm Drew. This guy's not Drew, uh, but at least to refer to this when you're looking back because, you know, you might be playing this and not have listened to that part. Anyway, key player, as I'm going to start calling him, uh, fall is falling down the rabbit hole uh, and makes his way into uh, a room that has the, uh, the doorknob. I love how the doorknob is a character, but this is Alice in Wonderland we're talking about. Uh, the cutscenes in theater mode do leave out... Uh, how he gets to that room, but basically it's not too complicated. He, uh, as you, after you land in the, uh, at the bottom of the rabbit hole and fighting a couple of heartless, you end up in this room. And if you've played kingdom hearts before, you will recognize that the key, that the, uh, the doorknob room is extremely simplified. Uh, I will talk about that more later, but I suspect, uh, if they had used the actual, uh, look of that room from later on in the franchise, i.e. the original game. It might have been a little too complicated. It may, it may have looked a little too crowded. So they extremely simplified. It actually probably took it too far, especially since this room has to feature the a scene where you shrink down. Uh, and that could have been extremely complicated if you have... Because I'm, I'm not sure if you actually had to fight Heartless in that room in the small form. But basically you walk up the key, the doorknob says he's too big. Uh, and the doorknob, after giving him a little bit of a run around suggests, okay, go drink. What's go to the, the bottle that's on the table, follow the directions. And, uh, you'll get, you know, you'll, you'll find out what to do from that. But then before you go over there, he says, Oh, wait a minute, you've got a key. Well, that makes this even simpler. But before you can even do that, a heartless comes in and steals the, the little vial. Uh, the Heartless in question is actually a Soldier Heartless. This is the first uh, Heartless where I've gotten to talk about this where there is actually more design into him than just a black creature because he actually is wearing kind of clothes and a helmet and uh, he has a little emblem on him. This emblem, known as essentially as the Heartless emblem, is looks like a, a heart type shapes on a little on a stick basically with these kind of barbed wire uh bars going across the heart like it's you know entrapping the heart the uh 
it, the the colors are it's it's kind of, it's a in shadow but the out it's outlined kind of in a red um and that is essentially the heartless symbol uh these are a special type of heartless known as emblem heartless and they are the most common i say they're special they're actually the most common uh type of heartless in the game i it's not just soldier because i mean there we will run into a lot of other types of emblem heartless across the entire franchise but we mostly see heartless with this emblem on them um i am curious as to why they have this emblem on them this early and if it's explained i will talk about it then but if not, I'm not going to talk about it till we get into the original Kingdom Hearts, because that does throw a little bit of wacky in it. Uh, but yeah, you go off and you fight the uh, your uh, key player goes off and fights this Heartless, uh, comes back, gets the he gets the vial, he comes back, he and uh, this is when we're going into the second cutscene, the perfect size, which literally all it is is it shows key player getting shrunk down small enough to go through the door that the doorknob is on uh they almost could have left that out with all the other stuff that they've cut out around it because literally you don't need to know that you shrunk for the next cutscene that's in the video it, it's on the app uh but going you'll at that point you will uh, the doorknob will say oh uh, i see you understood what was going on okay yeah you can go through the door and then you're in wonderland itself and we come up on alice and yes this is where we run into the third cutscene in the list which is alice uh alice will talk about trying to f uh is asking us where if uh well first she'll be confused that we're not talking in riddles and then she will ask us if we've seen uh, a white rabbit around that she's trying to find uh and she'll be she she'll try to explain why she's looking for the rabbit but eventually the rabbit will come in and will you know as the white rabbit does and every time you've ever seen him in alice in anything alice in wonderland related he'll say that he's late he's late for a very important day and then runs off screen and then alice says wait mr rabbit i'm uh, let me catch up to you and he, she runs off after him and at this point you kind of get the feeling at least from what i can tell that you might have gotten lost yourself uh so uh you're kind of looking around trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. Cause I mean the forest scene that backdrop you're on right now, cause you have found your way into a forest. Uh, there are signs everywhere that are pointing, uh, you know, in random directions, pretty much saying this way, that way, kind of like, this is obviously like the forest of confusion or something to that effect. And of course you're in an area, uh, you're in wonderland and you're in a forest and there's confusion this of course means that the cheshire cat's gonna show up and he does actually show up kind of in a creative way first his eyes and mouth uh will appear and then the rest of his uh body comes into play uh so i mean it does look nice but he pretty much gives you the same kind of run around the cheshire cat's known for giving you and says that says it says essentially might be one of the lines that describes Kingdom Hearts in a nutshell. And he says, many answers have questions. Or, no, all answers have many questions. It's like, yeah, that sounds like Kingdom Hearts to me. Um, but we'll get more into that uh, as we go along. Uh, at this point, that's pretty much where the cutscenes end on the app. Uh, from there, you apparently run off after Alice. And uh, she's still trying to catch the White Rabbit. Uh, eventually, as you're going through there, you will come across another type of Heartless. And this is our first uh, major boss Heartless that we're seeing. Or at least you're the first boss reprisal. As this is the same boss that will be fought later on in the Wonderland section of the original Kingdom Hearts called Trickmaster. Trickmaster is a rather tall um, Heartless. He's uh, most he, he's made up of like very these very small parts um, that kind of look like he's made out of paper or his arms are made out of paper. His legs kind of have these weird double jointed bowness to them. Like literally it's like it's like if you took a picture of, if you know the, the bones that are in the legs where it's kind of got a split bone kind of a thing there. Imagine the whole leg is like that, except they're 
there are individual knees like in the center of those bone structures that it kind of walks around on. It's a in the original uh, game, it it shows up. It, it looks rather awkward, but here they followed that to a T. Uh, it's got multiple faces coming out of kind of a neck. It's got, it's got kind of a neck stalk, and it's got multiple faces on that neck stalk, and the whole thing is colored red and black with kind of a Harlequin type of a look to it. And uh, it's carrying, it's got some purple accents on it, but it's also carrying these big purple, uh, I don't know what these things are, I'll be honest. But since he does juggle them through the fights a lot of times, I, we'll just say that they're juggling clubs. Because I think that's really what they're supposed to be, but they kind of just look like, uh, they look like giant Q-tips. <laughs> where the head is big, but it's got a small stick. Anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, you fight him as a boss for that level, or key player fought him as a boss for that level. I should mention that all of this appears to be taking place in the front yard of the White Rabbit's cottage. But the Great Rabbit is not home, as Alice will point out, saying that you know he's not here either. Alice, now convinced that the danger is past, probably because all the Heartless are now gone, is going to continue searching for the White Rabbit, and she thanks his, she thanks Key Player for his help. At that point, you run back into Chithri, and he says, well, look at you being all helpful and everything. Looks like everything's taking place here. Let's go see if anyone else needs some help. At which point, uh, Key Player then leaves Wonderland uh, via teleportal and heads towards what looks to be Agrabah. Which brings us to the end of this uh, quick little story recap. For this quick little introduction to the Wonderland area, I think it does a good job introducing you to some of the eccentricities of the Wonderland level. Um, once again, we are still not actually explaining why we are going around and helping all these people. What our entire point is, other than we are trying to collect Lux by defeating Heartless and we still do not know why. Um, but yeah, so far, this is still interesting. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing where, again, once again, where this goes. Uh, join me next time for Agrabah, where we will be looking at the cutscenes Kidnapped, A Close Call, and A Failed Attempt. And that will actually finish up when we once we see those, all of Chapter 1, finally. Chapter 1 does, well, it's not the longest one. It is the one with the most locations, I'll say. Because just scrolling through here, there's a couple more that really do seem to get long at some points. Especially when we get down to uh, one particular... Well, when we get to Chapters 38, 39, and 40, there will be a lot of cutscenes. So, uh... In the meantime, this is Drew, and we will catch you next time as we perhaps help a street rat find true love. The Cellcast is a member of the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information about shows in those networks, please check the links in the description. The Cellcast presents Untangling Kingdom Hearts as a production of the Cellcast podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at cast underscore cell, on Facebook at the Cellcast, on Twitch at the Cellcast Gaming, and you can email us at the Cellcast Podcast at gmail.com or visit us on our webpage at the Cellcast.podbean.com. Our theme music is Trinity by Tyler Spirian and is a remix of the song Dearly Beloved by Yoko Shimamura from the franchise Kingdom Hearts. The Cellcast Podcast has no affiliation with Square Enix, Disney, or for that matter, anyone else connected to the Kingdom Hearts franchise. The Cellcast Presents Untangling Kingdom Hearts is a fan production, and no copyright infringement is intended or implied. Kingdom Hearts is owned by both Disney and Square Enix. This podcast also is not intended to be a replacement for playing the games. Please go and play them yourself.